Now check this out. This is the Chrissy Swan Show. Do you like my jacket? I'm debuting a new jacket today. A hoodie. It's sick. It says Italia on it. It's a beautiful blue. You do look like a bit of an esche with the bum bag with it, though. But I do love it. Well, maybe it's just a look I'm going for. Maybe I'm, I'm an Eshe now. Do you still like it when I tell you that I bought it secondhand from ten, for $10 from a pre-loved market? I do. Do you? I do. I know, because I have a really... I bought a really cool Ralph Lauren shirt from a vintage store last week. No, not a vintage store. <laughs> okay. There's a difference. <laughs> not a vintage store. Listen to what I'm saying. A big market where everybody hangs up the shit that's been in their wardrobe and then they say, oh, everything's five bucks, everything's ten bucks. I love that for you, but maybe not for me. Not for but you. I love that for you. Okay, so you love that for me. How do you feel about the little shelf that I brought in this morning for our new office? I worry that our office is going to get too cluttered. <laughs> but, look, it doesn't go with our white colour scheme. It's brown, but that's cool. I'm, I'm okay to look past that. What if I told you that I picked it off a hard rubbish collection okay, this now, morning on my wall? I mean, I'm putting it back on the hard rubbish collection this <laughs> morning. <laughs> <laughs> The Chrissy Swan Show. Chrissy's clickbait. I still love this headline and I've been chuckling about it for a good 12 hours. Single person files over 23,000 complaints about Dublin Airport. Far out. Who has that much time? I agree. 23,000 complaints and all about the same thing. What do you think it might have been? What's something... What's something I'd complain about? And, and also, what, what is there something that an airport, for example, might have control over? You know, yeah. the thing with, with a complaint is, you only complain if there's a possibility of fixing it. For me, it would be rank toilets. Like, yes. if they're not keeping the, the services and amenities yes. clean. Yes, very bad wraps as well, like the bad tortilla wraps. <laughs> okay. The worst you can get is at an airport. I like that. It's no, unique. no. <laughs> This person filed over 23,000 complaints about noise from planes. <laughs> I'm not joking. They've got to be taking the piss. Noise from planes. That is great. I, I would say that that was 64 a day for years they sent. Every what? single I know. Every single time that their piece was disturbed by a flight flying overhead. I would suggest if I knew this person... To close down the Dublin Airport tab complaint mm. thing and open up realestate.com.au <laughs> or dot .id or dot .island, wherever that, wherever, whatever it is, and find somewhere that's not under a flight path. Correct. That is a futile ex- exercise. The airport can't do anything about the planes. No. But sh- surely that's a control C, control V job as well. Who's what, what's writing control C, control copy, V? Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I'm learning from you all the time. <laughs> I tell you what, I could, you and I could both learn a thing from some of these pageant queens. Newsflash, Miss Universe has left Melbourne, bound for Sydney. Okay. Because uh, that's got more opportunities for her. She's originally from Perth. And uh, she's settled in Melbourne, saw how that went, and now she's uh, she's in Sydney where she's going to make it the big time. And I hope that she gets more exposure because pageant queens or whatever they are, they've brought me a lot of joy oh, over hilarious. the years. hilarious. It was almost too hard to pick my two favourite pageant moments. This first one is doing the round quite recently. It was, it was this year, this pageant. Yeah, it was all over TikTok. And you know how for some inexplicable reason, the, the contestants, they can't just say, Miss Australia, they have to yell it at the top of their lungs. All right, now wait for Miss France. <laughs> <laughs> someone call <laughs> someone call a priest <laughs> Buns! and this is my all time favourite it was many years ago uh, on stage Miss South Carolina is asked a pretty pretty hard question a fifth of the US can't locate the US on a map why? I personally believe that US Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed- education, like such as in South Africa <laughs> and uh, the Iraq, everywhere South like Africa. such as, and such as. I believe that they should uh, 
our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. Thank you very much, that, South Carolina. <laughs> that ding was the sound of everybody passing out from boredom. <laughs> I think her lesson is it's okay to say, A, I don't know, or B, Such I'll go back to you. I'll oh. go back to you on that. I'll go back to you. The Chrissy Swan Show. For all your health and beauty products and advice you can count on, visit Priceline Pharmacy. Priceline has a massive range of brands at great everyday prices. Whatever you're after, you'll find it at Priceline Pharmacy. Hurry into your nearest Priceline Pharmacy or check out Priceline.com.au. The Chrissy Swan Show. Here is something I do not want to know how to do. How to create a nest box for your backyard or balcony. What are your thoughts? I've got some thoughts. What are yours? So do I. I never want to know how to do that. I also don't even want to hear about people talking about doing that or (laughs) see people doing that. I'm not mad on wildlife, Jack. (laughs) Nor am I. Particularly in my house. And especially trying to accommodate them within your house. Listen to this guy, Simon Cherryman, who is the brains behind these nest boxes that you can build to... for whatever reason to attract native wildlife <laughs> into your home. This is how his uh, his business idea started. He said he was lying in bed as a child, sick with chicken pox, when a tiny bird flew into his window and stunned itself. He goes on to say, my mum brought it in. Well, that there is an act of violence. <laughs> I do not want... I've had birds fly into my house and I've nearly had to call an ambulance <laughs> or the police because as far as I'm concerned, that's trespassing. I agree. Get out of my house. My kids... If a bird flies into the house, it's the best day of their life because sounds come out of my mouth. Chaotic Chrissy is in full swing. Yes. I'm like this. <laughs> I've hidden in the in the toilet and barked orders. Open the door. Put a blanket on it. <laughs> I can't deal with it. And no. I think it stems back when I was living on my own in my 30s. Great times, by the way. <laughs> Sweet, sweet times. Um, a possum broke into my house. Unwelcome. I hadn't invited it with a goddamn nest box. And that's scary when you're alone. Terrifying. They are big. Yeah. They are big and they make sounds like... <laughs> I thought it was, you know, I, w- I watched far too much true crime and I thought that my dream had come true. I'll hit my what do I touch? You're back on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be trusted. I know. With the buttons. Anyway, where was I? Oh, I thought I'd been I'd been chosen by a serial killer, but no. <laughs> it was a possum and it broke into my house and I just had a t-shirt on and no underpants, but I had to flee the premises. <laughs> so you just ran out onto the street. I ran out into the garden of the block of flats with just a t-shirt and no undies on. That's how I was absolutely fearful for for, for my life. Harry on level two might have invited you into his <laughs> nest box. <laughs> Maybe I invited him into my yeah. nest box later. The Chrissy Swan Show. What's Chrissy Swans, who am I? Yes, Megan from Brisbane, are you ready to take home the cash? Oh, I hope so. I hope so too. Now, I need to play by the rules. Jack has told me I can't give you any extraneous clues. I apologise in advance. And we should just mention, Megan, you registered via the Nova Player, so if you'd like to play with us tomorrow, jump on to the Nova Player. Yes. It was easy. It was easy, wasn't it, Megan? It was super easy. I've got five <laughs> clues here about a particular celebrity. I've also got $500 cash. See what a good girl I am, Jack? Yep. But for each incorrect guess you make, Megan, I'm going to take away 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Okay. I'm often surrounded by women, groups of women in my TV and movie roles. Osha Gunsberg? Oh, great guess. Good guess. Oh, but not right. Guess, but not yeah. right. Not good enough. Surrounded by women. Okay. Clue number two. I wore black to my wedding. Oh, black to the wedding. Oh, uh, no, I can't. What's that face for? Why are you giving me those eyes again? Megan, Jack <laughs> it makes Jack's day <laughs> when you have a bad day. You're down it. to $300, yeah, oh, Megan. Jack's a jerk. Check. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening. Uh, 
Megan, I want you to win. Okay. I just don't want you to win five hundred dollars because then it's not fun radio. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Yeah, look, I get that for entertainment purposes, but you could always <laughs> give me pink tickets as a consolation prize. We are giving them away later. Yeah, oh, we are. I know. Oh, later. You yeah. were giving them away earlier too. I know, but you yeah. want them from you want them from this show. It's after three. Yeah, I do. I want them from the Chrissy show. Okay. Massive fan. Oh, good on you, mate. Yeah. All right, clue okay. number three. I am a city chick who's won four Golden Globes and two Emmys. City. City chick. Mm. Oh, Sarah Jessica Parker? Yes! Yes! Yes, did you know? Well, obviously you didn't know. She wore black to her wedding because she was just feeling embarrassed about everybody looking at her and she didn't she Is didn't want to do that. wedding for Sarah Spuler? Yes, yes, Ferris oh. Bueller. He is also yeah, known as Matthew Broderick. Yes, yes, I do know his real name. Well, that is $300 for you, Megan. <gasps> the Chrissy Swan Show. Now, yesterday, you and I, it's as close to we've come to blows. It was. Uh, you accused me of having a messy boot, which is actually true. Straight facts. And I took exception to it. This is what it sounded like. If you're anything like me, your car is, I call it the mobile living room. I've got everything in there. Yeah. So. Your boot is wild. <laughs> the stuff you can fit in your boot, I'm impressed with. What? When you say wild, what <laughs> like, do you mean? No, Listen, I'm barely I, hanging on. I know, sorry, sorry. Continue <laughs> with your story. I don't need... Yes, my Logie's dress is still in my boot. <laughs> From a year ago. <laughs> Hasn't even it's been to the dry year. cleaner. It's not a year. It was June. And I... Uh, look, I don't know too many things, but I know that it's not June yet. <laughs> <laughs> the dress is still there, you'll be pleased to know, uh, among I other... I don't doubt it. <laughs> ...other amazing things. But, you know, there was many shows of solidarity on the socials last night. People saying that they call theirs the mobile kitchen, the mobile office, mobile studio. I know your your car is immaculate. It actually needs to clean at the moment, but the, the interior Why? is always immaculate. What? There's a bit of dust on it, and I've also <laughs> I've like it's like the exterior is dusty. And I've now also this morning my clean up my car job was to collate all my parking tickets and shove them in the glove box so I don't see them on the seat. A wonderful task and one that I wholeheartedly endorse. I've had emails from people saying, "Listen, I've got a measuring tape at all times in my boot." Um, spare pillows, which is one that I really what? love because they're bulky and utterly useless, and that's why they're in the boot. I want to hear from you. 13, 24, 10. You may actually, what about this? Call us from your boot. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. And we are fossicking around in your boot. Yesterday, I confessed. <laughs> well, I've I revealed. <laughs> Uh, I've got the dress that I wore to the Logies still in my boot. Now, check the diary. That was in June. Mm. So, how many months is that? Truly, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. This is the greatest radio ever. Eight months. Eight months in my vehicle. I've got to do something about you that. Do. Or I could just get it dry clean and put it on again for the next... Logies, how woke is that? Yes. Very a woke. A full, like, Lisa Wilkinson moment. Yeah. Was that her that did that? Yeah. Or was uh, it Carl? I might have been Ali Langdon. Carl did it. Anyway. Everyone's had a crack at that. I may as well. Sam from Bayview, we were asking, what is in your boot the weirdest and most wonderful thing? <laughs> Hi. Um, so, in my boot, I've got an assortment of cages in case I come across little animals on the road that need help. <laughs> After we just confessed, <laughs> we, just, we don't like wildlife. <laughs> I hope you weren't listening earlier when we said that any sort of wildlife that comes onto my property is going to be treated as a trespasser. <laughs> so, what do you do? Do you do you often use them? I've used them a few times, yeah. So, that's why I got different sizes. So, um, I rescued a duck and I rescued a lizard and I took them to the vet. So, yeah. When you say rescue, because I know a few people like you, you rescue people. Um <laughs> I find that the animal isn't actually in that much trouble, but you've, you've gone to the effort to get the cages, so you just got to use them, and you're like, yeah, that one's wounded enough for me to help. I just run them down. <laughs> <laughs> just to use the cages. I love that, Sam. I'm going to send you a Priceline voucher. You can go crazy in that oh, shop. Thank you. You're going to love it. Renee, Renee, what is in your boot that causes oh, you great you. shame? <laughs> you're not going to believe this. So, when you said yesterday that you had your Logie's dress there, I thought, 
I feel your pain, and particularly when you told Jack you were just hanging on. I really <laughs> felt your pain. That was my favourite moment too. <laughs> and that silence, that silence where you just looked at him like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. Um, so, my wedding dress still needs to be dry cleaned. This year we've been married 20 years. <laughs> oh, Renee. <laughs> Surely there's no rush. Uh, so it goes in, it goes in and out of the boot willy nilly. When I feel like I might drop it off, and then I don't get around to it, and then it comes back out again. Yeah. Oh. See, a problem shared is a problem halved. Isn't I feel it? so much better for me, <laughs> and I feel like you are really barely hanging on. Renee. <laughs> oh my god! I'm barely hanging on. I reckon I could make it better with a Priceline voucher. What doesn't a Priceline oh voucher god, make you're better? A thing. Thanks for your call, Beauty. See, it's quite normal. Jack, mm. to have things that don't belong in your boot in your boot. I feel claustrophobic for everyone. Oh my god, you're getting you're breaking out in hives. <laughs> Swans sweeping statements. I love a sweeping statement. I love to fight people <laughs> who I disagree with. Yeah, it's fun. It is often you. I was gonna say <laughs> keep it in the studio. And for you, it's often me. Yep. Um we are deeply in love, obviously, but you know, we 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 clash. Last week, I said that backyards are overrated. You agree with me? Unless you have a pool. Unless you have a pool. Yeah. But even so, that's just, you know, what, what do they call it? Put, putting lipstick on a pig. <laughs> it's like, you know, what is this useless place for? I better dig a hole in it and fill it with water. Yeah. And you said, Jack, your sweeping statement was the weddings are a waste of money. And time. And you stand by it. Yeah. And time. Yeah. <laughs> Divorce got rate through the roof. 13, 24, 10, what is your sweeping statement? We're not going to fight you, by the way. You are absolutely entitled to your opinion. And, Jack, remember that when I say the following. <laughs> what? Borat. Oh. <laughs> Borat, the film, is the funniest film of all time. I just want to say this. You've been in this business for, like, 20 years. Mm -hmm. You've worked with some of the funniest comedians yeah. in this nation. Mm -hmm. You've worked over TV and radio, and then you make a statement like that. Mm. And out I of every movie in the world. Out of every movie. Borat's the funniest movie. It's the one that I can put on and laugh. A hundred oh. times. A hundred times. It never gets old. Like, I get it's funny. I, I, you know what? After you've been, you and I have been arguing about this over the last week, I went and watched some YouTube clips. I agree. It's funny, but it's not the funniest movie in the world. Well, name one that's funnier. Bridesmaids, to me, is f a lot much funnier. Bridesmaids is funny. Mean Girls to me, way funnier. Borat is funniest. Borat is the funniest. I'm allowed to. That's my sweeping statement. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. Borat's the funniest film. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm over arguing about it. <laughs> you have it. Have it. I, I love Great. It. Congratulations. It's the funniest movie. <laughs> Let's go to bed. I love it when you get fed up with me. It brings me so much joy. What is your sweeping statement, Beverly? Well, first of all, Christy, it's so nice to have you back on the air. Thanks, Bev. You really make you really make us laugh, and you make a very entertaining afternoon. Thank you, Bev. Um, my statement is: I believe that the Kardashians are the most overrated, overpaid family in the world. Jack, your thoughts? I disagree, but that's okay. <laughs> what makes you say that? Is it what they say, how they live, how they've taken over our entire existence? Well, they have taken over our entire existence, but, but what do they actually do? I mean, I know they have clotheslines and makeup lines, but they only have those because they've made a name as celebrities for really no talent. De oh, Bev, these are fighting <laughs> words. But, Bev, do you think, given how successful the reality show has been, that maybe they do have a bit of talent? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl, Bev. You We're die right. on that hill. Absolutely. That's how you play sweeping statements. It is. Under no circumstances, back down. Brookie, Brooke. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? I'm good. What is your sweeping statement? Well, mine's a bit more mundane than the Kardashians, but I think that you use way more laundry liquid than you do powder. I agree, Brooke. Are you a laundry lady? Are you mad for laundry? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a secret confession. <laughs> Mine too. I, like I love laundry. it. I love it. What are your? Do you want to hear Jack's opinion on your sweeping <laughs> statement, or Brooke? Or couldn't you give two jots? <laughs> 
<laughs> Go for it, Jack. I I love the debate between powder and liquid. I use I grew up on um, powder. That sounds really bad on washing powder. <laughs> yeah. But Brooke, I find that liquid. It, the scent is better. Like it's it, it, it sort of infuses your clothes better with the the fragrance. Oh, nothing better than hanging it out on the line, Jack. Mm, it's true. It. Also, um, Brooke, um, am I going to ask him the one question that you ask anyone that sort of flushes out whether or not they're a laundry person or not? You know the question I'm asking, don't you, Brooke? I hope so. <laughs> Is your washing machine a front loader or a top loader? A front loader. Okay, well, you're allowed. You're allowed. <laughs> um, very nice sweeping statement, and uh, I'm with you. I'm a powder girl. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, Lucas, come in, Spinner. Hey, how you going? Hey. Love the show, guys. Oh, great. Um, Thanks, yeah. Much. My standby is the fact that I think the Jurassic Park should have ended definitely at the first movie. <laughs> like many other franchises out there, it's uh, something that's a bit long-lived and outstretched. <laughs> Did you make your opinions known in the cinema when you were watching the sequels? Oh, man, growing up as a young lad, watching them all, then listening to the rents go on about them all, it, I don't think I've ever listened to something more mundane and copied <laughs> over the year. Uh... Did you just call your parents the rents? <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah. I love that. Haven't that's, you heard that? No, that's going into the, the teen dictionary. Yes. Are you are you a teenager, Lucas, or close enough? No, nah, I'm 21, so you're basically uh, yeah. hit home with that anyway. Absolutely. Well, but there I you go. also commenting on the, the old Kardashians. I think you lot would be out of a job if they weren't around anymore. You're absolutely you're right. Wrong. You're absolutely right. All right, we're going to finish off with John. John? I don't have time for pleasantries, I'm sorry. Um <laughs> My sweeping statement is Frank Farmer was appalling at his job. Now, I, I know the name Frank Fra- Farmer. Can you explain who he is? Kevin Costner's character in The Bodyguard. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone... For a moment, if for a moment, if you'll just let me park the sexual tension that should never happen between a protector and a protectee, <laughs> Rachel's life is in danger. He takes her and the family to a remote, villa, a remote cabin that his father, Herb, owns. At that cabin, her son Fletcher is nearly blown up in a boat, and then after that happens, an intruder gets in the house and shoots her sister. And then <laughs> they go happening? back. There's not a there's not a scene where Frank is g- getting a warning or a pink slip, or Frank just keeps working for Rachel. How is that possible? That is a really good <laughs> point. I want to ask you a per- deeply personal question, if you don't mind, John. Sure. <laughs> the fact that you can reel off Herb's name and. <laughs> Fletcher's name. How many times do you think you have watched The Bodyguard? In excess of 30. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your sweeping statement and you're allowed to have it. The Chrissy Swan Show. Chrissy's clickbait. All right, here is what has got my attention. My ever-dwindling attention, <laughs> by the way. Aviation expert reveals safest seat if plane crashes. Oh, I like this. What do you think it is? Because I've always thought, yes, it's all very fine and well for you to be up the front in business class, but if you go, if you fly into a mountain, you're gone it's, first. Yeah. And I've never heard anybody sort of corroborate this uh, evidence that I've come up with. And here it is. Oh, well, give it to me. You are safest down the back, in economy, in the middle seat. Ugh. It's not even. It's not about economy. It's about the middle seat. I am a window seat guy. Are you? Yeah, and I like. I fight with family over it when we're going on holiday. The only problem with the window seat is if you have to go to the toilet, you have to contort yourself into this True. weird thing over and it's okay if you with your family because you can sort of go pop in the in someone's lap and then pop in someone <laughs> else's lap but what if there's strangers and then you've got to get everybody out i just think oh well that's just a part of being on the middle seat of the aisle that is never a more jack statement has been made <laughs> i flew from san francisco to melbourne recently on that big family griswold's holiday i took with my kids and i was in the middle seat row 55 out the back Wow. And it was snug. It you enjoyed was, it? Yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. I just, uh, we all sort of rolled into each other and slept, me and my two kids. I was going to say me and Harry, a businessman <laughs> yeah. from San Francisco. Um, so there you go. Middle seat down the back. Now, this headline, I'm still laughing. 
Can we say nuts at this time? Yes. Tommy Lee has posted his nuts on social media again and suddenly I'm anaphylactic. <laughs> That's a good headline. So we might remember last year, Tommy Lee accidentally, and I use that term very loosely, uh, posted his piece. <laughs> what yeah. do you call it? The front part. It wasn't an accident, though. He captioned that original d pick. oops. Yeah, I know. That was not an oops. Come on. It wasn't a bad picture, though. Wasn't it? No. I can't remember looking at it Here, for I've got it. hours. Oh, <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I'm with most women when I say we don't want to see that. Okay. We don't need to see that. Well, that was Do last year. Do not send those. What about the nuts this year? The nuts are really distressing, but they do remind me of one of the greatest Christmas presents I ever got, which was a little pendant of two red cherries, <laughs> <laughs> which would dangle around my neck attractively, not unlike Tommy Lee's extraordinarily long... They're very saggy. ...bits and bobs. Look, I've now that I've seen the front part and the back part... I just feel like it's like Old Kent Road and um, and Whitechapel on Monopoly. I've got the full set. <laughs> the full set also passed me the EpiPen. <laughs> now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.